Photogrammetry is the process of creating a 3D object from a series of images. And with Substance Sampler's new 3D capture mode, you can do just that. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the process of capturing images outdoors, as well as using Substance Sampler's new 3D capture mode. Now, for the source captures, I'm gonna be using just the camera in my smartphone. So let's go take a walk and shoot some photos. When taking photos for a 3D capture outdoors, it's best to wait for cloudy day as you will get nice diffused lighting. The goal is to eliminate any harsh lighting and shadows. In this example, I'm using the Adobe Lightroom app, but you can use any app you like. I lock the focus on the subject I want to capture and then lower exposure slightly to make sure I don't get any blown out highlights. It's better to slightly underexpose. Some smartphones allow you to shoot raw images and that gives you the ability to fully adjust the images in post. Now I walk around the subject in two passes snapping photos. For the first pass, denoted by the green circle, I'm shooting the ground and lower part of the tree stump. On the second pass, denoted by the blue circle, I'm shooting the midsection and top of the stump. The focus peaking option in the Lightroom app allows me to visualize areas in focus. I keep my subject in the green and I'm good to go. After walking around the tree stump twice, I ended up taking 38 shots. Now that we have our images or data set, we can jump over to Substance Sampler and start working with 3D Capture. Here in Substance Sampler, we are going to come over to the Get Content button and I'm going to choose 3D Capture. This opens the 3D Capture import dialog and I'm just going to browse for my files. Here you can see that I have my data set or the photos that I took here of the tree stump. Let me just select all of the photos and I'll click open. Now all of my images are being imported into Sampler. There are three phases to the 3D capture process. First, we have the data set and alignment phase. And here's where we can view all of the images that we imported into Sampler. Here you can see I have 38 photos, the image dimension, as well as my sensor size and focal length. Now I can also come over to my properties and choose to either import a mask or generate a mask here directly in the 3D capture window. A mask is helpful if we want to isolate a specific object in my scene. Here for this tree stump and ground, I really don't want a mask because I want to have the tree stump and the ground together. So I'm just gonna choose none and go back to my basic tab. Now you can also have multiple photo groups. Here you can see that I have one photo group, which is this original data set, and I can name this here if I like. I'm just gonna leave it at photo group one. And in this basic example, I only need just one group. So all of this is gonna work. Now at this point here, I can just click submit. And for the alignment settings, I'm gonna set my precision to high. And also you can set your photo ordering. Default is gonna work perfect for me, but you can also choose to order by sequence. So I'm just gonna go with default and then click process. Now Sampler is going to go through the entire process of aligning the photos so that we can get a mesh reconstruction. Here is the mesh reconstruction phase. Here in the 3D view, you can see that I have a point cloud. Now, if the data set is aligned correctly, this point cloud should pretty much represent the scene that you're trying to capture. And here in my case, I can clearly see my tree stump as well as the ground. Now you'll also notice that we have a series of cameras here that were created during the reconstruction process and derived from my photos. I can click on the camera to look through it right here in the 3D view and then hit the F key on the keyboard to refocus the 3D view. Now looking at the scene, I can see that I have a few stray points. And here I can come over to my region of interest and click on the show bounding box. The bounding box is going to encompass the entire point cloud in my scene. And I can use this region of interest to crop out any of these stray points that I do not want to include in the mesh reconstruction. So now I'll just grab hold of one of the axis handles and just drag it inwards to crop out some of those stray points. And we'll do this here on all sides. This looks pretty good and now I am ready to go. For the geometry details, I have a few options here. I'm going to keep this set to full, and now I can just come over to the Submit button and click Submit. Substance Sampler is now going to be processing the mesh, and this processing is happening local on your machine. 
Now we have the post process phase. At the bottom of my 3D view, I'm able to look at the mesh as a solid, wireframe, or check the UVs. Let's jump back to the material mode and I can click the add to project button to send this right into a sampler project. However, we can choose to process this mesh as a new version. So let's check out the post process settings. Here I have my asset resolution. I'm gonna set this to 4096 by 4096. And for the target count, I can set a value that is going to indicate the level of decimation. We also have the ability to enable normal baking, height baking, and ambient occlusion. If we take a look at the advanced general baking settings, you'll notice that we have several parameters. These parameters are the same that you would find in other Substance apps, such as Substance Designer or Substance Painter. In my case, I'm going to turn off the normal height and ambient occlusion baking, and I'm going to show you another workflow using the Image to Material AI powered once we get into Substance Sampler. I'm going this route just to simply showcase some different options that you have. Now, the next thing we want to take a look at is the Advanced Decimation tab. Under quadratic, we have two options, planes and triangle. I'm gonna leave this set to planes, and then I'm going to set the surface regularity setting. This will affect the topology of the mesh. Triangles will be larger depending on the surface regularity. A regular surface is a plane. So if your surface is a closed plane, the decimation will create larger triangles as less detail is needed, such as with the ground in this tree stump example. However, an irregular surface, such as the tree stump itself, will create smaller triangles because more detail is needed. You can experiment with this setting. In my case, a value of 0.2 works very well for this tree stump. Now that I have this set, I can click the Process New Version option. This is going to generate a new version of my mesh based on any of the baking and decimation settings that I have. It's also going to retain over here on the versions tab, my original mesh. The post processing tab allows me to work with different versions and experiment with different baking options. Here I processed a few different versions, just playing around with the settings to try and get the best result that I could. So I went with this version one that was using my surface regularity of 0.2. So now that I finished the process of decimating the mesh, as well as reprojecting the textures, I can add this right to my substance sampler project, once again, by clicking the add to project button. So here I can name this mesh and I'm just gonna call this tree stump and then click okay. Now here in the layer stack, you can see that an OBJ was added, there's a mesh process taking place as well as a mesh transform. And this new 3D captured mesh will now be visible here in my Substance Sampler 3D viewport. And here I can see the captured mesh as well as the reprojected UVs. Now let's take a look at how we can use image to material. So first thing I'm gonna do is come over here to my layer stack and add a new layer. And I'm gonna do a quick search for channel switch. Now with the channel switch enabled, right now currently I just have my scan that was coming from 3D Capture as my base color. And so what I'm going to do is simply come over to my output channel and I need to move this base color into the scan one channel. And that's easy to do. I just select output channel. Let's just scroll down until we see scan one. And that's all set up. Image to material now has the appropriate output channel with the data that it needs from base color to scan one to do its job. So now we'll hit add layer once more and let's do image to material. And here I'm going to use the AI powered version. And now image to material is going to take that base color and it's going to extrapolate from that my normal height, roughness, ambient occlusion, and so on. And as we can see right off the bat, this delighting intensity is super high. I don't even need it. I'm just gonna drop it right down to zero. When I took my photos of the tree stump, I did so under that cloudy day. So I was already working with uh, very diffuse lighting, no harsh shadows to worry about. But now, as you can see here, if I looked at my channels, I now have my normal map. I have roughness information and I can use all of the controls as, as part of image to material to dial in these values just like I want. So, for example, I think I might just raise the base value here on my roughness just a little bit. Let's go with something like that. Also, if we take a look, we have our ambient occlusion information. This is looking really good. Lots of great information here, uh, just as if we were to have baked this. 
image to material does a great job here in this area. Now, like I said, I can also come over and just play around with my height. I'm just going to leave everything at default at this point here. And for the final step, I am going to export this mesh. So if I come all the way over here in my UI to the share button, you can see that I have my export as, and let's take a look at these export settings. So now, because I'm working with a 3D object, you can see that my mesh settings is set to export USD. And here I can set my name of the actual object and the save to directory. I'm just gonna leave this here at my default state. And if I come over here to my actual mesh settings, though, you can see that I have a format option. And here, by default, it's set to USD, but I can choose FBX, I can do a GLB, an OBJ, whatever I need to do. But I'm just going to leave this as USD because, you know, I think I'd like to take this into Painter. And with Painter 8.3, we now can import directly this USD mesh. So this is going to work great for me. Now, for the material settings, if I click this here, I have a set of material options. At the top, you can see that I have my format and it's set to export for me an SBS AR file. I love this option because it's going to give me all my maps and the self-contained substance material format this is going to be great. I can use this pretty much anywhere. However, if I want to change this, I just click the drop down and I can choose something like PNG or TIFF or something like that. Now for the material type, I have the option here. Is this a standard material, a decal or an atlas? In my case here, it's just a standard material. And then I can set my width and height values. I can also go through and disable any of these channels. So for example, this opacity, I don't need that. So I'm just going to uncheck that value. So I have things set up. I'm going to export my mesh as a USD file. I have my material settings that's going to export as an SBSAR. And then it's just a matter of clicking export and Substance Sampler is going to export the mesh. It's going to create for me that SBSAR file. And because once again, I used image to material, I'm now going to have all the channels I need. So my base color, it's going to contain my roughness information, ambient occlusion, normal, and so on. Here I've added the USD file and the substance material of my scan in Substance Painter and added a snow material to make a winter asset. It's super powerful to take the scans into Painter to fix any issues with the maps or blend materials. That concludes this video on 3D Capture in Substance Sampler. I hope you've enjoyed this basic walkthrough. I love that you don't have to go far. Just pick up your phone and step out your door. There is a world just waiting to be discovered with Substance. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.